allow it to be recorded or not. But uh, then, uh, and we'll basically get going on today's subject. We'll have the standard disclaimer here of, uh, you know, this is our opinions on how to do everything. And, uh, you know, take uh, take that with a grain of salt for your own woodworking. You know, don't uh, don't do exactly what we say to do and expect it to turn out like it does for uh, for us. And if it turns out better, good. If yeah, not, you know, show us, uh, uh, practice more, right? Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, if you want to give a quick introduction to the topic for today and what we're today, we're talking about fasteners. And well, introduce yourself first, then maybe somebody new. Right, know. right. I am Joan, Joan Rivers, industrial designer, artist, and I've been woodworking for about 10 ish years. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, and a lot more. Ed Rosardi, been woodworking for 50 years. Um, been my passion all my life, and uh, just enjoy the heck out of it. I'm, I'm Dennis Hayes, and I'm uh, uh, Kevin's uncle. Yeah, so and <laughs> that's my qualification. Over here, I'm Kevin, and uh, this is my uncle over here, and uh, I'm uh, from uh, Cucamonga Woodworking. So, and any questions, just send me an email on the website or wherever, or any of the any place you can find. And you know, that's usually if even if I don't respond right away, I do see what you're sending me, and and uh, you know, thinking about the information. So, uh, so today's subject is going to be, like we said, uh, fasteners. fasteners. Yes. Uh, might not seem like the most exciting subject, just saying the word, but uh, there's actually a lot of good things to talk about with fasteners and mm -hmm. what to do, what not to do, and specifically for fine woodworking, because that's our main interest here is fine woodworking. And and one of the things that we talked about last week is Dennis and Ed have their opinion about whether you really should use them or not <laughs> and uh, for fine woodworking. Well, we're going to clear that up. We're going to clear that up tonight. Okay, that'll, <laughs> that'll be discussed here. So uh, we'll hop right into our video we have here. Yeah, and there'll be some basic fastener information also. Yep. So hold on a second. Let me figure out how to there you go. get this video going. Just click on the Okay, and then I'm going to share my screen. There you go. Do that. Yeah, make it hit the triangle start button. There you go. All right, so we'll get started on this and uh, see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, on screen discuss or uh, click off the, uh, yeah, that one. It should be there. Oh. Got to get the got to get the volume up. Okay, where's that at? I don't know. All right. Yeah, I got that up here. Bear, I don't know. Hold on, everyone. We we'll get this uh, figured out here in a second. Or get get back to the partial screen. We'll just play it off the uh, the program. <laughs> Where do I do that? Uh, green. We used to go up to the team and the bottom. Okay. Oh, no, uh, green again. Uh, it just, just get rid of it and we'll go uh, and come over here. Here, look, here let, let me do it. Okay. Yeah, just stand by. We're just going to use, I don't know why they didn't uh, do it. We'll just use the uh, uh, iMovie deal. And just bear with me, it'll take a second. So first of all, we're going to view. We're going to go uh, start from the beginning. View, play full screen. OK, there you go. Hopefully there's sound to this one. Oh, all right. That's not the beginning. That's no, not the beginning. Yeah, well, I'll take it. Right. I get it. Yeah. And now. <laughs> okay, we'll try this again here in a second and it should work. Hopefully. There's no sound on that. 
too organized. Yeah, well, we try to be organized here. And... I don't want to talk about it anymore. Oh, I got another uh, topic. Uh, how about uh, metal turning on the wood lay? <laughs> have I done? I've done a couple things with that. I haven't I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> yeah, go go to file. How do you do? You have like a tool rest mm -hmm. that like uh, you hook up that's special for metal, don't you? View Click and play. <laughs> Here we go. Hopefully we have volume. Oh, what what's what is the deal? All right, this is the best part. Yep. Let's see. Yeah, let, let me sit down there. Because I, I just go ahead and start talking, Kevin. Okay. Well, so uh and well, since you guys already know what you said the first time, you can just uh, <laughs> talk about this, right? Uh, Lips may not line up with <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, Kevin, how do we get to my, okay, here's the, here's the movie. Yep. And then we're just gonna play it. What, what's the deal? I know the speakers uh, in full volume there on there. What's up? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, start all over again. I had I had a plug in to uh well yeah, it does. I, I didn't turn it on. Okay, so now we'll we'll try to get going okay. properly this time. So uh any any questions before we get started? The nut behind the handle was loose. That was the problem. <laughs> yep. <laughs> a couple screws loose yeah, here is what, yeah. it, what it is. Yeah, here, right? here. All right. So we will get going. Here's a. Uh... There we go. This is the best part. Yep. Actually, let's talk about metal casting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dennis and I had an interesting discussion after the meeting Monday night, and he brought something to my attention. Now we can hear it, but not see it. I primarily use. Okay. What's that? Oh, we didn't share screen. Okay, well, let's do this one last time here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the screen share. The screen. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, can everyone. We didn't share screen. Can everyone see yeah, now? Yeah, we can see now. Okay, okay. We'll try this one last time. Here. No, we'll do it until okay. we get it right. Yeah, we'll do it until seven, everyone can stay around till about midnight, right? I have okay. good faith so about go. this try, though. I feel Probably good about it. Okay. Some standard hardware uh, 
that's made out of metal. You can buy it at the hardware. So we'll 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 show that later. I'll do that a, a little demo in my shop uh, when we get back there. So uh, uh, there are times when you use it, but again, typically not, except for screws like this and a little bit of re reinforcement. Today we're going to talk about fasteners. We're going to start with the two most common type of fasteners, the Phillips and the flathead or slot fastener. The Phillips <laughs> is the Beautiful. most common, most useful, but it's not necessarily the best. When you get into the fine woodworking and in your local hardware store, you're going to see a lot of other options like the star, which is actually called the horse and the square bit known as the Roberts, mm -hmm. Robertson bit. So when it comes to Robertson bits, a lot of the screws will take, will accept the Phillips head or Robertson bit, which makes it more ideal if you can't find your bit. Um, what we like about the Robertson and, and the fly is that the bit actually it All right, so they can't see the stuff there and it doesn't slide out so you can just us a lot more for it when you're picking fasteners you also need to know the anatomy of your fastener if you're getting a fastener that's going to pull two pieces together you just like they can't see this either. the neck one and the type of thread you have these are wood screws you see a nice thick thread and then a nice long neck because you don't want the the piece of wood you're trying to fasten to, um, to get stuck in it. And I'll demonstrate that also. But the thread can actually hold the two pieces you're trying to fasten together. It can hold them apart. As far as screw head types go, there's only two that really matter to us, the countersunk and the pan. You see the pan is flat on the bottom. Countersunk has the V-shape that matches the countersink bits we talked about in our last segment. So the example I have here for you, which we do a lot, is say you want to fasten two pieces of wood together with your fastener. I've got a torque screw here with the countersink head and the countersink piece of wood. So say I'm going to fasten, I'm gonna fasten this piece of wood to this other piece of wood. See the clutch kicked in right as the screw bottomed out, but there's a gap. So why didn't this pull in all the way? This is an example of the threads holding the two pieces of wood apart because they're threading still inside of the wood. Is this a screw at the back? Oh no, it's okay. Example. <laughs> If your screw is too short, your thread is too long, they're still threading inside of this wood, holding these two pieces apart from each other. So the only way to fix this is to back it out. Bring those pieces together. And then drive it in again. However, there's a better way which is if you are able to get a screw with a neck length that is longer than the piece of wood you're going to fasten is one way to do it so now if i drive this in and actually be like as far as you want from the other piece you're trying to fasten and the only thing that will happen is this screw is just going to slide through this piece of wood until it's pulled tight against the next piece of wood.
and a clamp. Mm -hmm. Another option would be to drill the hole out bigger on the piece of wood you're trying to bring in so that the threads don't catch it. Okay. <laughs> nice watch you got there, Joe. Some holes. It's, it's about torque settings. I don't know if you saw that. The first drill for the first three is going to be uh, driven in with that setting on T. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this took about 20 minutes and it, it was boring. And what did you say? <laughs> um, that's appropriate. Oh, he's just trying multiple uh, torque settings to see what it's going to take to drive the screws in. And I could do the appropriate setting. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And that is that's perfect. That's exactly <laughs> how you want it. You want to drive it in, but you don't want to strip it uh, because that will. Uh, yeah. Once you strip the head out, that's kind of a, a no -no. Now I'm going to take this all the way up to 22. And you'll see. Uh, oh, in fact, I could probably. Well, I, I, I've got a little bit of a point to roll with the And that's not, that's not that's good. Right. But you always want the clutch to kick in right. just as it. Oh. <laughs> okay, Ed just walked over there to get his easy outs. I'll put them up and show them here. Try to remember how to get them off. Child proof easy outs. We don't need some fasteners. Don't have much call for easy outs. But that's what they look like. Okay. Just take one out there. Now, one side we're going to drill, um, it's got like a drill uh, setting, and then the other side is easy. Okay. And we'll first uh, go in and drill this out. In real life, Ed, how many times have you done this? I messed this head up, so it will not come out. Let me get in there and take a look at it. Basically, what it did is it drilled a little hole for the extractor to work. Okay, now we have the extractor, which is put in reverse. Okay, just pull it right there. Get this. This right there. We'll move it. So it's kind of hard to see. And so now I'm going to turn it to the reverse setting. It's a reverse setting. I try not to use these very often. <laughs> yeah, Kenny asked the, the question oh, about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So now, reverse. There you go. And it's actually stuck in the bit. Okay. okay. Yeah, I try not to use it. I told Kenny, uh, he asked a question about how to get screws out. And I said, well, you don't booger them up because it's a pain. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> it is a pain, Kenny. Yeah, I felt it a few times myself. Yeah. You know, if you use the clutch features and if you use good screws, it, it shouldn't happen. I don't think I've broken a you know the the good uh grab one of the the specs it's in that uh, you know the i don't think i've ever broken one of these the style here uh of course i you know i do use the the clutched uh drill and these are pretty tough uh, unlike the uh, you have the 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 old school steel Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't, I have a bunch of these left over, but I wouldn't use these at all. Uh, you, you, if you drill the right pilot hole and all that, they'll, they'll work fine, but uh, it's not worth the risk. 
That's it. Uh, yeah, for the presentation. And now uh, there, there's a million other things to talk about with screws and fasteners, like uh, about some of the basic stuff, like uh, sizes and what to, you know, making your pilot holes and stuff like that. If uh, if you want to, like, uh, because what if somebody doesn't hasn't made them before? What's the best way to do it? How do you make sure you're drilling straight down and do you need to drill? We all have draw an analogy. You can look at a video and learn, try to learn how to play a guitar. You're not going to learn very much from a video. You have to practice and practice and practice. And that's what woodworking is. It, it, a lot of people think this is so easy, but I had a friend that couldn't hold a drill straight. And I had to stand there and in two planes, get it vertical and, and, and center it for him. He, had, he didn't have the ability to hold the drill straight. You know why I can do it? Because I've done it 8 million times. That's all. A lot of this, whether you're drilling the holes in the wood and putting the screws in, if you don't feel comfortable with it, grab a piece of wood and drill 100 holes in it and practice until you feel comfortable with it. It's really simple. You'll go, <laughs> oh, wow, what's so hard about this? Or you, you drill a whole bunch of holes with your hand drill and you start looking and why are them all going in at an angle? Because you're holding your hand at an angle. You have to develop the ability to drill a straight hole. So, you know, I'm not trying to pontificate or lecture. Oh, yes, it, we are. But, you know, I, after a while, it gets old with people going, I can't do this, I can't do this. Well, you have to work out. Yeah. I, I, I had a similar, I have a, a, a good friend who comes over on Saturday. And he wanted to cut, I have a piece of, uh, I don't know if it's around here somewhere, a piece of, it's about a half or three quarter by three quarter by this long piece of ebony that I cut off of something. And he wanted two perfectly square little buttons. And he was over at the other side of the shop and he, was, he had a, a, an inexpensive razor saw and an inexpensive little miter box. And he was struggling for, for 15 minutes. And he said, I just can't get this straight. I just can't get it perfect. And, and he's, he's new to woodworking, good guy. He's more of an artist. He leans in that direction. And, and I kind of got, uh, I said, well, you can't expect to do things perfectly if you've done it four times. I said, if you want to do it perfectly, uh, then, then quit your job. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> quit your job and go into your shop and do nothing. And this is exactly what uh, Ed just said. And do nothing but cut perfect little three quarter by three quarter squares of ebony. And obviously that's that's impractical. So I, I was a little short with them, and I said, "Look, uh, what was what was the term I used earlier?" The uh, uh, level of uh, confidence? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> what is your what is tolerance. what is your tolerance for imperfection? Right. If 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 an eighty five degree drill is okay, does that hit your tolerance, or does a ninety ninety is that your tolerance? So you you have to develop the hand skills, and the only way you can do that is by repetition. Right. Uh, I, I'm I'm uh, this is a really a, a kind of a, a, a a, a constant theme in what we talk about. Right. Uh, and I'm sure the guys and gals who've been doing this for a while understand what we're talking okay. It takes a lot of effort to do things perfectly by hand. That's why we have table saws. Right. Uh, it, it takes, it takes the, the hand skills out of the equation, but also it adds a whole nother set of, of problems. If you cut a three quarter by three quarter inch piece of ebony on the table saw, as soon as it cuts off, it's going to yeah. throw it somewhere and hit you in the eye. Uh, sometimes hand tools are good. Sometimes they're, they're uh, it's easier to do it by hand. And we'll, yeah. we'll talk a little bit about that maybe in the next one yep. uh, on the hand tools. But oh, uh, I was just going to add, um, you know, for us that are visually impaired, um, I went to Lee Valley and they got like a compass, a round one, yep. and then you can glue it on your your drill so then i can make sure i line it up and i can get a straight line but i don't have the 
vision to get to do it myself. It, I don't think it's necessarily a vision thing. It, it's more of a, are you familiar, if you're familiar with the word proprioception, it, it's where you you kind of know where your, your arms and fingers and your, your limbs are without actually having to see them. You, it is a, a sense that, that we have mm -hmm. and, and just uh, get a drill and, and close your eyes and try to drill a perfectly straight hole. Yeah, but but that, is, that is a good workaround though, just using a, a, comp, a compass that's a 90 mm -hmm. degree and you know, you just, it, it you is, know, it's but, a good way to train yourself to do it correctly. Yep. But uh, uh, if it works, I, great. I think there's one other comment I'd like to make about Dennis said you have to uh, repetition, which is true. But you have to have situational awareness. If you're drilling a hole and you're staring up at the ceiling, <laughs> how are you going to know that? So you have to visualize and have situational awareness that you're going in straight and, or put a two inch wood screw in a half inch piece of wood. That's not situational awareness. That's just yeah. oblivious, you know, oblivious to what's going on around. Have you guys ever watched Eric Clapton play the guitar? How many of you watch Eric Clapton play? He's the second best guitar player in the ranking of guitar players. He can play a guitar and look at the ceiling and he doesn't miss a note. He knows every fret, every string. He just, it's just unbelievable to watch the guy. That's situational awareness. Yeah. Okay. And he knows yeah. where his fingers are. Exactly. You don't know. So what, what, what about how do you, some of you others do that? Can you drill offhand uh, uh, and you're, can you saw a straight line and a 90 and all that? Hey guys, I was late coming in. This is Jay. Hey. Uh, when I was in uh, my intro furniture school times uh, back a few years ago, uh, my uh, mentor, uh, gave us a great little pearl uh, for those. We were all struggling exactly for what's being discussed tonight. And he said, take a small 90 degree uh, square and put it on the board that you're about to screw into and have the uh, 90 degree limb of the square going up parallel to your drill or your drill bit, I meant. See, you also, you know, you have two angles. Anybody's ever put a a post in the ground, they've got a neat little level that looks at the level one way and the other way at the same time. So you may be right on one plane, but as Ed was talking about, if you're not situationally aware, you might be way off on the other plane. Right. So, the, but the level's a nice little trick. You can get, get ready to drill and then put your level down and see how close you were. Yeah, And it helps you to build a, it works really nice, Michelle, if you ever try that. Here's another suggestion on how to drill a straight hole in a piece of wood. Take another piece of wood and go over to your drill press and drill a hole in it. Yeah. A, a little round, it does a small piece. Take that piece back and put your drill bit in it. It's like a 90 degree cross here. Draw that piece of wood. I kind of I lost you guys. That the one. Am I the only one? No, I I can't get them either. Yeah, they're broke up. They're they're gone. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't. If you guys are out there thinking about buying something to like like that compass or anything to try to drill straight. I just use the square and um, this is how my dad taught me or whatever. And after you do it a few times, you get sort of a feel for it. It's not one of those things that you're going to need to like spend money to like buy a thing that's going to help you. Cause if, once you do it a couple of times, you sort of, I don't know. I think you kind of just feel it. You train yourself to drill straight and then you just move your body so that you're perfectly straight with the hole you want to go and you could drill straight every time. I wouldn't spend any money to buy anything that helped me. Oh, well, see, my problem is I only have a little bit of vision. So my retina came off. So every time I look at wood, everything looks crooked. 
Oh yeah. So well, there is no shame in having using a straight edge, dude. You know, if you just need a straight edge out there or a square to sort of help you establish a, a baseline to, for your eyesight, there ain't no shame in it. It's better to be have like a strange contraption that helps you figure it out than it is to do it wrong in front of everybody, you know? Yeah, I'm going to try it. But I think it's, you'll find that it's not really a vision thing. It's sort of like a, a feeling of like how your body is and how it move it's like a body mechanical thing more than it is a vision yeah. thing to me yeah. anyway practice. practice if you practice using a guide though then you'll get used you'll to get that angle of your wrist yeah yeah when, when we back, were doing guys. when joe and i when joe and i were doing the classes we would actually we'd have two people you know the the operator yeah. and right. another person right. would, would stand it this way so they, they had it uh, uh so i would yeah i would go would like that this angle You'd be on the side. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. But it takes two people. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What do you guys use fasteners for? <laughs> yeah, what uh anyone have any uh questions or any anything else to add with to this conversation or, or this discussion? Any projects? Well, were you gonna talk about what those numbers mean? Oh, the clutch yeah. numbers. Are the clutch numbers or the, which, yeah. No, not the clutch numbers. I, yeah, I got that now. Okay. On the, on the screws. There's oh, eight the, oh, the and 10s and 12s and. Uh, and yeah, where do those come from? Why don't they just say it's an eighth of an inch or it's a uh, seven millimeters or whatever? Why do they have those numbers? Uh. I know yeah, Ed knows. We don't have any. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know. Is I thought we how much over all that uh, with all the different sizes last week. Well, well, but uh, I mean, but it's the no, so there, there's the different ones that are you know for the for the drill bits. But I mean, that's kind of the thing to talk about is you know you you when you go to buy the screws, they have different random numbers, and what does that mean? Uh, uh, okay, what what do you know what a size what the size is of a number ten? Point two twenty four. Okay. <laughs> That uh, I'm sorry, that's a number twelve. A uh, 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 number ten is two twenty. A that, number eight is two hundred. That's we, thousands. I we went over that last week with uh, uh, incremental. Not, I, I not too. About yeah, incremental. but then so what? What drill bit? If I have a bunch of drill bits that are like an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch and sixteen inches, and I have like a number six screw, what do I use to drill my pilot holes with, or how do I find the answer to that? Test it on this. Crap, it's a drill hole gauge. You have not memorized every. Um, I, I, I guess uh, that it's funny. I have, see that, that. Uh, that looks like a number eight. Okay, th this guy here is, I have a full set, but that countersink is the only one I use. It'll work for, if the screw's too big for that, I don't use it. So my use of metal fasteners is extremely limited. Um, I'll use them for uh, as a clamp, more for any structural stuff. So, so uh, Ed, I think the question is, if you have a number eight drill bit, do you use number eight screws with yes. that? Okay, so that, that oh, okay. so so basically, yeah. the the uh, that just match. Does that make sense, Michelle? I think if uh... yeah, the the people that manufacture the the counter sinks and the drills, they are designed specifically for that size screw. So. The, the drill bit and the count, not so much the countersink, but mostly the drill bit is slightly undersized than the threads. It's almost like the shank of the, or the in, inner diameter of the screw, not the outer diameter of the threads. Maybe, I don't know the exact number, but it, it allows the threads to grab the wood. So these drill bits and they're tapered drill bits also, just like uh, some of the screws now, um, this one has a slight taper on it here at the end. So they're designed, so if you use a number eight uh, drill bit or uh, a drill, you use a number eight screw. Don't try to put a number 10 or a 12 in there. Um, it, it won't, it'll crack the wood or you won't drive it in or you'll strip the head off. So th th yeah, the simple, the simple answer is again, a, a number 10 screw is a number 10 countersink. No, what uh, what size do you normally use for the stuff you do? 
I use the size up accordingly for the project. Uh, if I'm gluing two pieces of three inch thick walnut together, I need a five inch long screw. You just have to kind of, you know, if you're, if you're gluing two pieces of, or screwing two pieces of wood together that are a quarter of an inch thick, that's only a half an inch. You, well, what only, about, what about you can't the, use a screw any longer than three eighths of an inch. Or a yeah, number right. four. A number four. Well, the, well, well you could that? use a number 10, but it, <laughs> if you wanted to, but it can't, it can only be three eighths of an inch long yeah. or you're going to go through the wood. What was that quote earlier that- um, Situational tolerance. awareness? Oh. No, 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 oh. the tolerance, the tolerance. Tolerance for imperfection. So my perfection when it comes to fastness is I don't want to switch. So I might get it a little bit bigger. The screw might be uh, a number screw slightly wider than the countersink. It, I, I, know, I know about the type of wood I'm using. So if depending on the grain direction, if you have really soft wood, then I might get a slightly fatter screw just so that it, it's tight in there. Yeah. But my tolerance for imperfection is it's, it's it's is higher. It's, yeah. So I don't measure like the engineer every, you know, the exact, I'll, I'll get the uh, fattest screw I can fit. But I make sure that the length, you know, isn't going to come through the backside. Mm -hmm. okay. And if the threading is, is too thick, then I might drill out the, um, the closer piece. Because you're really, you're using this as a clamp. You're, you're clamping it between the head and the threads and the other piece in the middle that's sliding on the neck needs to to move yeah and the mm -hmm. the glue uh, we're we're assuming we're gluing up the joint mm -hmm. the glue does most of the work yeah, yeah most most of the work the the i i joe and i were talking and i think at the end of the video basically for me the the screw is simply a clamp that's why i i contend i have plenty of clamps Occasionally, you do need, like, well, I used to get the grade eight, I think, was that for like, yeah, that's, that's the car stuff. Screw to, you need a, a fastener a that's going to hold some yeah, for, bolts or, yeah. yeah, but I mean, I don't think, have you had a need for that in fine woodworking? <laughs> <No>. Yeah, <laughs> 50,000 PSI. So I think that's, I think the only guy that doesn't have, have you're no, he's got call. a, somebody has a question here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say for the guy who doesn't have all the special uh, tapping screws for screws and stuff, you know, if this is this is the three eighths threaded bolt, okay? Yeah. I was always taught that you go to whatever that center shaft is. That's what you're going to do. You can go mm -hmm. get these calipers at uh, uh, Harbor Freight for about twenty bucks or so if it's mm -hmm. that important to you. And measure what that shaft is inside there. That's a quarter inch hole you drill for a three eighths inch wood yep. a lag screw. And yeah, perfect. And for, you know, even one one smaller. I mean, if you want to go to that trouble, or you could take a drill bit and put up there and match it to that yeah. solid piece of your drill. That's how I do it. <laughs> and we also have you can get these anywhere. These uh, gauges. It's a drill gauge that you could use to put the, like, you know, uh, machine bolts through these holes to find out how big you want to drill that hole. Yep. There's simple things out there. You don't have to have every tool in the world. I wish I did, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you just can't afford all of them. And, um, I do have some from Craftsman, but anyway, there's some real simple ways to figure this out. Yeah, and as it relates to fine woodworking, I think that's the, you know, kind of the uh, limited use, but it is good to know. The more information you have on everything is, is good. So. I once bought some specialty screws from Ed. <laughs> you remember that? What's that? For the one-day table leg? Yeah. Yeah. So in this application, I had some really dense wood, one-day, and I had... Uh, some thick legs on a really large table and I didn't want the torque of the table to, to snap, snap the legs off. So in addition to my like mortise and tenon joint, I drove, what was it, two or three of those fat screws through there. Any normal screw from Home Depot would have probably, the head would have snapped off before I got it in all the way. So- Even with the correct countersink? Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Ed, Ed knew that and had a solution. Do you remember what those were? Did they have a square drive on the head? 
Was it a square drum? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I bought them about twenty years ago. I bought a mm -hmm. big box of them, and again, don't use them that often. I don't remember the brand name, but uh, uh, I learned my lesson buying cheap wood screws, and I don't do it anymore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. let's be honest, I, I don't think any of us are in a production application where we're using thousands of wood screws a week. Oh, <laughs> yeah, give me a break. So why not buy a $4 box of wood screws, 100 of them, instead of a, a buck and a half? I mean, come on, you're, you're pinching pennies. It's, yeah. it's a, a minor issue. So. What's your favorite brand for screws? Do you have a favorite? Home Depot. Home Depot, Home Depot. mostly China. China. <laughs> Yeah, my, my, mine is uh, I, I, I had I, I know that uh, I don't know it's uh, the Home Depot the good you're, brand the Home you're Depot. Type on three. Uh, yeah, Type on three. <laughs> Home <laughs> Depot <laughs> brand is usually China and they're very brittle. No, these and, are uh, and a lot of the heads will snap right off of them with nothing yeah. at all. To add to what Joan said, um, if you're hanging a cabinet on the wall, you can't use a drywall screw. Um, and I think you have to look at what you're doing. And yes, there are there are certainly a whole bunch of cheap screws out there, and they they're worthless. Um, but if you're using a bunch of drywall screws and the heads are snapping off, it's time to get some cabinet screws. It's time to invest in. It, it doesn't cost a whole lot, but get the right screw for the right thing that you're doing. Rex, Rex, yeah, yeah because the uh, the cabinet screws they actually have a tapered head, you know, a mm -hmm. flat head, I should say, whereas your drywall is a bugle head and it doesn't have much of a taper. And I think that's why they snap very easy. They snap right away. Right. Amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any, uh, anyone have questions or any topics you want to talk about? Michelle, you always have some <laughs> I was questions. just <laughs> unmuting. Okay, no, I was wondering for a future topic. Um, you know, like you see these really nice poles for dressers and things. Um, is it possible um, how to make some of those, you know, poles for drawers? You know, different types instead of having to, you know, go and buy like a wood uh, pull. Are you talking about plugs? Or, no. or no, drawer pulls. Drawer, drawer pulls. pulls. Oh. Uh, like yeah. knobs or handles, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, something, you know, like, uh, you know, if you get some walnut and you want to make your own design yeah. for like I, a pull. You, I know that they have like hardware because you'll still need to get some hardware for them. You'll have to get like because you want your your door handle, your door pulls to have fasteners on them so you could pull them on and off. So you're going to need like a threaded insert on the one side. I know that if you have a rock layer near your house, they have kits where all you need to do is have like the wood and they have all the hardware that you can have, you know, they're kind of cashy if you ask me for a drawer pull, but you might be able to find other kits, but you're going to need the hardware and then you're going to need a lathe probably. I mean, what kind of handles or pulls are you talking about making like? Well, what about finger pulls? I got all my drawers on my dressers. It's like an indent that you, they actually sell the bits for the routers for that and you shape your own. Your fingers fit into it. You don't even see the pull and you pull the drawer out or open the cabinet door. Can you make a video on that for next time? Um, actually, uh, I, I have several cabinets up in the house that, uh, I, I, again, take take what I understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I uh, I made finger pulls and sculpted handles for every. Uh, I have a wall unit. I'll get some pictures of those and, and do a little short, you know, ten minute uh, or less video on what I do for basically uh, cabinet doors. Um, and I'll, I'll do a couple in my uh, my kitchen. And I, I use uh, regular hardware on those. 
but uh, uh, you 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 would turn the ebony uh, poles on your. I've, I've turned ebony poles. I've made uh, poles that um, more they're uh, dadoed into the cabinet, and I just I do my I do a lot. Of, I don't like metal hardware on wood furniture. I, I, I tell you what, that actually that that would be a nice little uh, like a mini uh, thing. I could easily do a little video on that uh, for next time. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then we'll figure out what we want to do uh, you know, for the major topic. But actually, there seems to be a lot of interest in uh, the finger pull kind of a thing. And uh, again, I, I, I would rather sculpt one out or carve one out or gouge one out as opposed to going to uh, the store and, and uh, buying them, uh, it's, it's much more fun. And, and I, I think uh, the, the best way to do it is practice, right? If you're- uh, yeah. if, if the theme of this meeting is anything, is go out and cut wood uh, and practice, practice. Mm -hmm. or, or make something practical. And it, again, it may not be perfect and figure out how you can get better and your tolerance for imperfection. You know, build it up. Be little. Be a little less tolerant of yourself, as you you know. Be a little more critical, and uh, and you'll get better. It just takes time right. in the saddle. Practice. Hone your skills. Hone your skills. Right. And we can do something on sharpening, maybe. <laughs> Again, they don't call call this wood Disneyland. They call it woodworking. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you're doing something repetitious like poles and that, you would yeah. normally make a template, which makes it perfect. Each one yeah. is going to be identical. So, yeah, uh, templates and uh, 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 jigs and stuff are are really appropriate for those repetitious things. All right, any other? Oh, here's an example here from there Steve. Go. There you okay, go. Uh, is that late? Uh, this is about an inch and a half high, about yep. two inches diameter on the big diameter, and about five eighths on the small. Yeah, it looks good. And, and nice. I, did, I drilled a hole in yeah. it and put a screw up from the bottom of yeah. the plate top. Cool. Uh, yeah, lathes. You could get a small pen size lathe and you could turn small drawer pulls on that or, or pens or anything small. Or you could get a medium size lathe and make bowls. And bowls. But the, uh, Getting back to the skew while I have your attention. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I don't ever use the heel on the skew if I can avoid it. Um, especially when I'm smoothing the outside of an object off. Um, the skew is something that really needs a lot of practice. And if you just go slow and easy with it over time, uh, you'll get a whole lot better and things will start falling into place for you. But you can't be afraid of it. You know, you just, it's just like any other carpentry tool that you're going to use. You can't be afraid of it. If you are, then, then you should step away from it. But that's all I got. That, that's good. Yeah, we'll being afraid of it, like it makes your body all tense and it causes you to like be all tight, which is like the last thing you want to be when you're dealing with tool, you know, like that's why being afraid of it makes it even more dangerous than just it normally is because a lot of times it's you being like so rigid, it, it makes it even worse, you know? Uh -huh. That's why you kind of just gotta, I mean, I've had, things fly off my lathe and like hit me in the chest and it's wasn't that bad so i don't know if i have a you're tough an unrealistic <laughs> like fearlessness now but i'm like oh let me but the wood tells you like you'll feel it like it starts to fight you when you're about when it's about to come off you know 
here. Working on a lathe and using tools, it's like electricity. You want to respect them, not be afraid of them, but respect yeah. them. Yeah. Yep. Big right, amen. Um, go ahead. All right, I think that's about everything for tonight. Yeah. Uh, any any last minute uh, or final questions or comments or anything? Or requests. Or requests. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Is there anything Wednesday? Uh, nothing Wednesday. Yeah. And you know, uh, we're still looking for that that uh, that lathe turning video. We'd love to have you. Uh, well, it's actually. Yeah. I know. <laughs> No pressure. No pressure. Did, did you get the last ones that I sent? Uh, yes, we did. Okay. 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 Yeah, All right. you, you, Kevin didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't it. send it to him yet. So yeah. we're uh, delayed a little bit. M Mondays for now, for the next week or two. I, yeah, I Monday. Can't, you know, next two or three weeks. I got a, a bunch of other obligations yeah. during the uh, rest of the week. So. Yeah, Ned's got a rocking chair to build. I'm. Uh, uh, how about if we could, I think it would really be cool. I, I like seeing your, the, the poll that you did. Yes. You know, just what about having everybody, if you have something that you can show easily to your, your camera to, to, you know, take 10 minutes and, you know, what, what you've made or what you're, you're proud of to show it and talk about it for a little bit. Yeah. And we could do that at the end of the, uh, yeah. I, I'd love to, to see some of that. Yep. Um, and, uh, we could do the same thing. Yep. Of course, Ed, on, how how long would it take? How long is it going to take you to make that rocking chair? 120 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be beautiful. Uh, I just started a rescue wood uh, eucalyptus rescue wood um, table that I think I'm, I'm, it, it's going to be different. So uh, it's got a lot lot of good things in the wind. How about you, John? What do you got cooking? I've got my um three rocking chair prototypes and a couple of pieces for some clients um outdoor seating made out of some fruitless orange, fruitless orange rescue yeah. wood from their property and uh my my uh usual home projects yeah and kevin well i got my dining room stuff i still haven't touched in, the, yeah, in a couple I, I think weeks we here. need to i think we need to get on that so yeah. mm -hmm. on that note Work hard. Hey, work hard. Cut yeah, thanks everyone for. Uh, I've showing got up. a uh, question for Steve. Yes. Steve, have you done any metal spinning with your lathe work? No, but only because every time I go to the garage, I forget to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really want to try that, but I just. I, now, that sounds scary. I haven't done it yet. I've got a piece that I did. It's, um, I don't know, it's over on shop, but another, one of the things that uh, I'm getting ready to demo at our club is turning the cube. You turn a cube like so, point to point. This is five by five by five. And you can end up with a piece like this. Yep. Oh, three points. Wow. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. So anytime anybody wants anything to do Anybody wants to know anything to do with the lathe, I'm going to defer to him. <laughs> Smart man. Mm -hmm. wow. No, it, it, I would love to. Yeah, well, the, the, the original plan, and actually jo Joaquin also agreed to it, is when we go over your video, we'll have both of you as the, the main people answering questions about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we just need to, like I said, uh, dig up some extra spare time to be able to do that and <laughs> make sure we all. Uh, you know, you know, it basically works for all of us for that time. So yeah, that's okay. kind of our plan. Um, but it'll be in a couple of weeks. No, you know, personally uh, delaying things, apologize about that, but you know, that's just what I Well, daylight saving time is what's getting me. I mean, I missed the last two meetings with them out here in the shop and all of a sudden, you know, it's uh, time, the meeting's already over. That's why it's late today. I can't. <laughs> keep up with the daylight saving time and what time it is. Okay. <clears throat> well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'm gonna sign off. So thanks for a, a good time, guys. I agree, thank hey, you. Take care. Thank you. Les, good to see you.
Same here. I guess they're gone. 